Welcome back. Do remember, all our top stories can be found on our website, channelstv.com, and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Log on to m.channelstv.com to see us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channels TV app has an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. The Ekiti State Government has compensated residents whose buildings were demolished as work commences on a bridge, a flyover bridge, in Adekiti, the first of its kind in the state capital. Governor Ayafayoshe, who supervised the demolition, also personally handed over checks in compensation to the property owners. He says that the flyover bridge, which will gulp about 5 billion naira in cost, is just one of those projects that will help turn Aduikiti into a modern city. Properties being destroyed in Aduikiti, the Ekiti state capital. What looks like rubble now will eventually give way to a flyover bridge, the first of its kind in the state capital. Nothing in the way of the project is spared, as structures owned by individuals and corporate bodies are brought down. Governor Ayodele Fayoshe is personally ensuring things are done right. He asks the people to bear with the state government while the construction is ongoing, saying everything will be completed within a year. It is in our interest that we make the environment better than we met it, keep promises and ensure that the future of this state is better than it. In due course, in another one year to the 18th of June, I appeal to them to please bear with us. It will soon be over and uh, everybody will be happy thereafter. Uh, we have uh, taken into consideration the depreciation, the effect of uh, the payment on them, and we've been fair to them. Those whose homes and other property were affected got compensation from the state government. The developmental project is for all of us. They are still being compensated for their properties that are being demolished. Some people have their shops there, some people have their residential apartments, some people have just their fence, some people is just the pavement. But whatsoever is being, destruct, uh, being destroyed or pulled down, you know, due to the construction going on, they have to be compensated in accordance with the law. And that is what we are doing today. The 1.2 kilometer flyover will cost the state over 5 billion naira. To the aviation sector, Nigeria's flag carrier and West and Central Africa's largest airline, Arik Air, has resumed normal flight services for domestic, regional, and international operations. In a statement, the airline explained that all of its shuttled flights were operated yesterday and pledged to sustain the tempo on a daily basis. Arik Air's operations were disrupted on Tuesday over what it claimed was the inability to renew its insurance due to the two-day public holiday to mark Idel Kabir. It adds that the backlog of passengers from the disruption has already been accommodated with extra flights introduced to minimize inconvenience to passengers. And in the South-South, the Cross River State Government says it has begun massive rehabilitation and reconstruction of schools across the state in order to revamp the educational standards. According to the chairman, State Universal Basic Education Board, the projects which are ongoing are being funded from an excess fund which was left with the Central Bank of Nigeria from 2012 to 2015. He says the funds which could not be accessed for a period of three years came through for the present administration. Special education funds for 212 and 213, uh, 213 to 214 was not assessed. I have been able to also assess the same. And uh, we have infrastructural development going on in our special education centers across the state provision of borehole to some of these uh, special schools are all going. Some have completed, have just issued some completion certificate to some contractors. While there was an existing one, 2011 a project which is still ongoing, some contractors have executed 
jobs are still ongoing. Very importantly, based on the fund that has been released to us, I have been able to assess the four years and we have commenced procurement. If you look at today's paper, we have published about 230 something, more than 200 jobs to intervene in our basic education sector. There are too many roads in the southeast that are in bad shape, most of them federal roads. That's coming from the national leadership of the Nigeria Union of Journalists during the visit to the Imo State Governor, Rocha Sokoroja, Inoweri, the state capital. The national vice chairman of the union, Zone C, believes a state of emergency should be declared concerning the roads, most of which are in deplorable shape, causing hardship on commuters. He says the federal government should work with the five southeast governors to find a solution to this problem. We call on the federal government and the state governments in the southeast to immediately declare a state of emergency on all the roads in the southeast. Because, of course, because of the deplorable state of these roads, uh, movement, uh, vehicular movements, uh, movements of uh, farm produce, and what have you, uh, is uh, completely uh, uh, hammered. We can no longer move freely. The Yobe State Governor Ibrahim Gaydam has attributed the relative peace being enjoyed across the troubled northeast to professionalism by the military and its working with the people. The governor told the new commandant of the 27 Task Force Battalion of the Nigerian Army, Brigadier General Emmanuel Kwesi, that the people are now confident to give useful information to security forces. Brigadier General Kwesi says he appreciates the Yobe State Government's support for the security forces. He gave assurances that his command will continue to implement the agenda of the Chief of Army Staff towards the full restoration of peace to Yobe State and the Northeast. New Commander from 2015 to May, we have experienced quite substantial amount of changes. Um, last year, by now, I think, um, although they have not gone completely, the Boko Haram insurgents are well, it is quite some time now we have not had to any Boko Haram terrorist attacks in any part of uh, uh, Yobe State. Only some pockets of them are moving around our villages. Even those ones are used to be crushed by the people. So we remain appreciative to your talent and professional nature in handling this insurgents. And it is my prayers and expectation that maybe in the next few months, uh, after the rainy season, the anything to do with Boko Haram terrorists will, uh, will be history. We are going to do all within our powers to ensure that we carry out the mandate given to us by the Chief of Army Staff, uh, Lieutenant General T.Y. Brantai, which is to ensure that your patient is safe and secure. We are definitely going to leave those to turn to make sure that that is achieved. You're watching news across Nigeria. Coming up, the anti-bomb squad in Lagos speak of the efforts they are making to keep the country safe.